So let me ask you, you smoke? You, you stop smoking? Hey, give, it, give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. You smoking? You smoke? No. You don't smoke. Okay, hold on. I know you got I know you're trying to go, but I just want to give you as much, I just want to give you five minutes. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So you don't smoke. You got a girlfriend? No girlfriend. Good. Are you are you are you sleeping with anybody right now? Okay, that's good. That's very good. You want to keep yourself pure. Now, when it comes to uh what is it? Drinking. You drink? You don't drink. You're on the right path. Not, not, you can drink. It's not unlawful to drink. God is not against that because what was Jesus' first miracle? Turn water into wine at a wedding. So it ain't nothing wrong with dr drinking, but there is something wrong with being drunk. Let me ask you this, though. What's today? Give me that. What's today? Let me ask him. I know you might know. Today is Saturday, right? But what is today concerning God? You don't know. How can I let you leave without knowing how to worship God? Because guess what? God says that we have to worship him. We have to turn back to him because we're not worshiping him right now. Worshiping him right now. How do you worship God right now? How do you worship God? Okay. Okay. You say your prayers, right? Okay. So, are you, do you believe that you're in sin or no? You say you don't know? Okay. Give me that. Give me sin. So I want to show you something because your pastor can't even answer this to you. If you ask your pastor what is sin, he'll say something like, uh, missing the mark. Uh, uh, when you do something wrong. That's not specific. You understand? Because I can go ahead and burp at the dinner table. Am I in sin? It's not appropriate, but I'm not in sin. So let's find out what the definition of sin is. Read that. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 3. I'm making a point for you. I got, I got something for you. Read 1 John 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is sin is the transgression of the law. What does it mean to transgress a law? It means to break. If I say, if, if, if God says, thou shalt not steal, and you steal, you have transgressed the law. You have broken the law. Right? right? That's what you have done if you steal. Right? So... If God says, thou shalt not kill, and you murder somebody out of cold blood, have you broken the law? Right. So what are some of the sins that you may be in right now? Do you shave your face? You shave your face? Give me that. So we have to show you what kind of sin we might be in because that's how we're going to save our people. We're going to give you an actual shot at salvation. That's what it is. It's not about just, how you doing, sis? We're talking about sin. Do you know what sin is? Sin is the breaking of God's laws. When we break God's laws, we are in sin, right? So I'm going to show him a law that we need to change to be able to keep it and not be in sin. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make baldness upon their head, uh -huh. neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Why? Because God does not want us following after Egyptian customs. Right. We were slaves in Egypt. Do you know that we're the Jews, sister? We are the Israelites, right? right. So, guys, so when we were in Egypt, so I've got in my eye, right, my bad. So when we were in Egypt, we were slaves under the Egyptians. We were the ones building the Valley of the Kings, the pyramids, and all of that. We followed their ways. We wore skirts and stuff like that, like the Egyptians did. We shaved off our hair on our head. We looked like Michael Jordan, just like the Egyptians did. God says, now that you're coming back to your heritage, now that you know who you are, I'm returning you to your heritage. Don't keep none of the ways of the Egyptians, because right. I destroyed them to rescue you out of them, right? So read that. What is one of the laws we got to keep to not be like the Egyptians? They shall not make baldness upon their head. So you got hair on your head. You're keeping that law. Good job. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Only thing you're missing is to grow out your beard, King. It's a badge of manly dignity. That's right. Every man listening, if you can grow out your beard, it don't have to be long. You can keep it short. You can keep it neat. Just don't cut into it. Don't get the chin strap. You, gotta, you, can, you can trim it down but don't cut into it to where it's like a, a chin strap. You understand? So why do you shave your face? It, itch, it itches because you shave it. But if you stop shaving it, it's gonna stop itching. That's one of the punishments for breaking that law. You get razor bumps, you end up uh, getting rashes, it itches, ingrown uh, hair, uh, hairs and stuff like that, it coils back into your skin. All of that stuff happens because we break that law and that's a judgment for it. 
You understand? So God says that we have to grow out our beards and show ourselves as a manly badge of dignity. Right. What is the what is the uh, the image that God shows us of the tribe of Judah? It's an actual lion. Right. That's the spirit that you have. But guess what? If a, if a male lion doesn't have a mane, then what you gonna mistake it for? Lion. A female lion, exactly. Right. Right. So, so when you don't have on your beard, that's an effeminate trait. A lot of dudes try to do it to, to look younger or whatever. We ain't supposed to be trying to look younger. We supposed to be trying to look like men. Right. You understand? We're not trying to be, supposed to be trying to look cute. We're supposed to be trying to look like men who got it together. You understand? So at the end of the day, and that's, that's you too, do you shave your face? All right, just grow it out. Grow it out, keep it trim, keep it nice, keep it neat, but that's your manly badge of dignity, bro. You understand? So guess what? You said you say your prayers, right? That's how you worship your God. Give me that in John 30, uh, 9, 31. So we have to understand that there's a way to serve God. And if you're not serving God the right way by shaving your face, guess what? Or is, is God going to answer your prayers? Is God going to listen to your prayers if you're not doing what he say? Let's see. Let's see what God said. God gave us all the answers. Read that. It's the book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. Uh -huh. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Uh -huh. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will, him he heareth. So God says he doesn't hear sinners. So you said you worship God by praying to him. But all those prayers are being missed because you keep shaving off your face. You keep shaving off your manly badge of dignity. had a manly badge of dignity. You understand? Even the false image of Christ, some of them have a beard on. You know what I'm saying? So how could you not have a beard when you represent the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? God himself. You his son. You got to be looking like him. You understand? And that's a, that's a beautiful thing because you're, in, you're gonna sh we're showing you your manhood. You know what I mean? So let me ask you this. How does God want us to worship him? Give me that in Deuteronomy 7 and, uh, I mean, tw uh, 10, 12. How does, because you said you worship God by praying to him. Now we showed you what sin is. We showed you that God does not answer the prayers of sinners. When you start growing out your beard, you can go, you can start praying to him again. Because you're keeping what he says. You're worshiping, worshiping him in actions and not just words. Read that. How does God want us to worship him? Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And now Israel... What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Every time you hear the name Israel in the Bible, it's talking about you. Take that personally. You understand? What, what's your name again? Omar, my bad. I, I'm Omar, right? Just like when somebody calls out Omar and you look back, when somebody says Israel, you should be looking back. You understand? That's your name. That's your last name. It means prince who has power with God. You understand? How you doing, sis? How you doing? You know you're an Israelite, right? Yeah. That means that means princess who has power with God. That's what you are. This is how this is how you worship God. Read that. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. Uh -huh. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Uh -huh. But to fear the Lord thy God. You gotta fear him because you gotta fear his judgments. The reason why did we go into slavery, King? Why did God, if we're the children of God, why did he allow us to go into slavery? We're gonna show you because that was one of his judgments for breaking his commandments. So we have to fear him because he's the one who actually can kill your body and your soul. Read, read that. To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. So whatever, whatever God tells us to do, we're supposed to do it. Like growing out our beard. Read. And to love him. To love him. Read. And to serve the Lord thy God uh -huh. with all thy heart and with all thy soul. How do we do all of these things? How do we serve God according to what God says and not according to our own mind? Read. To keep the commandments. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. So we showed you a minute ago what sin is. Sin is the breaking of God's commandments. That's how you serve Satan, is by going against what God says. Because that's 
Satan's whole purpose is to get you to think that you can go against what God says and still get blessed. Right? But God says to do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. That's the only way we can actually serve him. So you said today is, sab is, is, is Saturday, right? Give me that. I got to show you what today is and how to celebrate it. Are you, are you going to buy anything today? You're not going to buy it? Good. Because today is a holy Sabbath day of the Lord. Read that. It's the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why do we have to remember the Sabbath day? Because in slavery, they took our names, nationality, our heritage, and they broke us as a people. So guess what? We lost the Sabbath day. And we started worshiping the Sabbath day on Sunday. We're going to find out what day Sabbath day is. Read. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So God set aside. He said you can work from Sunday all the way to uh, to Friday night. You can do all of that. But guess what? The Sabbath day, no working. No working. You working? You do have a job right now? You don't have a job right now. Okay, so that means that you can keep the Sabbath day every Sabbath. You understand? You can keep the Sabbath day every Sabbath. How you doing, sis? What's, what's the Sabbath day? When is the Sabbath day? Friday. Friday. Friday, okay. Okay, Friday when? Friday afternoon. Friday night. Friday night. Read that again. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Read it again. But the seventh day is the Sabbath. Read it again. But the seventh day. Read from the top. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy because in slavery, we learned that Sabbath day was on Sunday. Sunday service. It's not. Exactly. Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Pull out your phone. You got your phone on you? Look at the calendar. Look at the calendar. Let's see what the calendar says the first day of the week is. Because we mistake the first work, first day of the work week, which is Monday, we mistake that for the first week, first day of the, uh, of the week in the month. But that's why I buy a blank calendar, so I can make it correct. Absolutely. Look at, look at your calendar on your phone, and you're going to see it says Sunday. It says Sunday is the first day of the week. So think about it. You got Sunday, which is the, you, let me see, you see it? Okay, let me show you. Let me show you on my phone. Right here. I'm going to show you on my phone. Ah, come look. So what day is the first day of the week? Nah, it's uh, the first day of the week. It starts up there with the, with the letter. Sunday. That's the first day of the week. So now all we got to do is do counting. Monday, I mean Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The day starts Friday night, ends Saturday night. Because all in, in the beginning, the, the new day, the first day started with darkness. So that's when the day starts. You understand? So the seventh day is actually Saturday, that's Friday right. night to Saturday night. That's right. You understand? Did you know that? Did your pastor and uncle tell you that? Why not? What day did your pastor and uncle tell you, uh, tell you to worship God? Yeah, on, Sunday. on Sunday. So guess what? When do you when do you when do you worship God, sis? When do we, when do you worship God, sis? Every day. Every day, right? When is the Sabbath day? On Friday nights. Friday nights to Saturday nights, right? So where do we get Sunday service? When do we get Sunday service and Sunday worship? Sis, where do we get Sunday service? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Come on over. Come on over. Sis. Sis, come through. Come through, sis. Where do we get Sunday service from? So we got Sunday service from our slave masters. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children.